has not protested the gentrification, the taking over, the transferring of this immense wealth to white people, their Japheth people, and why he's agreed to let it happen. Back in 1995, there was a Jewish business owner who opened a store on 125th Street called Freddy's Fashion Mart. And uh, there were several people by black campaign persons and another fellow that owned a record store there that was uh, also renting space from the United Church there on 125th Street. Al Sharpton, coming out of some very dark times uh, in his experience, led a protest against this Jewish store. Is this scam likely? I don't want you calling me right now, scam likely. Call somebody else. Hold up now. Get off the line. There you go. Hold up. Two weeks earlier, and they stood out there day after day, handing out leaflets, telling people how awful, and calling this Jewish store owner a, 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 an interloper, a Jewish interloper. Well, one of the persons that was involved in the march and the protest of Al Shar with Al Sharpton against this Jewish store owner on 125th Street, when Al Sharpton was protesting against gentrification, one of these protesters came back a day later with a gun, went into Freddy's Fashion Mart, held everybody hostage, dropped the Molotov cocktail in a clothing store. The place went up in flames just like that. Seven young people, mainly Hispanics, 23, 19 years old, lost their lives. You know, a number of people lost their lives in the fire up in the Bronx last week. And 13 people lost their lives in a fire in Philadelphia. Eight people lost their lives. One of Al Sharpton's uh, protest participants went in there, locked those people in the basement, and they suffocated. They were roasted. They, their, their bodies were burned to a crisp. Al Sharpton. Later, Al Sharpton gets together with the owner of the store and some lawyers and others and cuts a deal that he will not protest uh, any gentrification in New York if, now listen to this very carefully, because we have to go through the documents uh, from the, the various newspapers uh, to indicate that Al Sharpton sat down and cut a deal with the Jewish people and developers, and he did it at the Cotton Club. They gave him $800,000. Now, listen to me very carefully. If you want to know why Al Sharpton has never led another march against a trillion-dollar enterprise and what is the land-grabbing and predatory land-grabbing from black people and the increase in homeless shelters in Harlem, why Al Sharpton has not said a mumbling word. After Al Sharpton, and one can debate this either way you want, but most people know that Al Sharpton, uh, his protesting led to the death of those seven Latino workers, store workers, and also the death of the gunman who set out that model. Everybody knows you can't prove it because the fellow who did it is dead. If, if he had not died, perhaps he would testified that Al sent him there to do that, but you can't prove it. But everybody knows it. Everybody knows that the depths of Freddie's fire on December 8th, that happened at Freddie's Fashion Mart, on December 8th, 1995, was instigated by Al Sharp. Now, you can't prove it. And so you can charge me as saying I don't have evidence of that. But let me say this. Al Sharpton has never acknowledged he has never repented for these deaths Al Sharpton these, these, these Latino workers in Freddie's fashion mart didn't have a chance and if Al Sharpton had never marched that follower of Al Sharpton would have never gone in to burn that place down and yet today Joe Biden calls him up District Attorney Alvin Bragg goes to his chicken shack and nobody wants to hold Al Sharpton accountable for the deaths of these young people.
And I'm here. Miss India, put it up on the, on, the, on the screen. I'm here. And nobody even talks about it. And Al Sharpton runs around the world, you know, always got some sort of march and protest when somebody white kills somebody black. But why you, you're not going to be able to prove it because the person who, and Al ain't going to confess it, but the person who did the murder and the burning of the, the, the score, he's dead. So that takes Al off the hook. But why is it that the district attorney of the county of Manhattan is hobnobbing with Al Sharpton? Why is it that Joe Biden is using the National Action Network to hold a Martin Luther King Jr. speech? Why is it that Barack Hussein Obama comes to Harlem to kiss Al Sharpton the ring? Why is it a man who's involved in that? But that ain't all is it that Al has done. That's not all. So it took $800,000. Is that right? And he went on to schedule several meetings with Jewish bankers and developers that he would never lead a protest against the gentrification of the poor people in Harlem who are not living in shelters or sleeping on the streets. He cut a deal. Here's, here's what my theory is. I've been studying Al and watching him for quite some time. Here's what I believe. Here's what I believe Al did. When they saw, when the Jewish developers saw the power of death at the protest of Al Sharpton, and they had already started moving into the Harlem community, uh, in the justification process, they hadn't gotten nowhere near where they are now. They gave it, it, Al Sharpton eight hundred thousand dollars there at the Cotton Club, but then reached a later agreement that he would continually enjoy and endure from the profits of Harlem as each development went up. Al got a piece of the action. Now. They're trying to build a 17-story building on 145th Street in his honor. But I want to tell you, I've lived in Harlem. I've watched Al Sharpton, and I've watched these developers. Listen, there's a pastor named Kevin Griffin, the Bishop Griffin, who was a pastor of the Child's Memorial Church on Amsterdam Avenue. Sold the church building, as did a lot of pastor did but this pastor got caught this pastor cut a deal with the developers and he was he was paid nine hundred thousand dollars nearly a million dollars to close the deal I, i've confessed they've offered me money for our buildings and our property as well yeah they have i confess it they have but if you know this pastor pocketed $900,000 and other pastors are pocketing money, they just haven't got called. Listen to me. Now listen to me. Listen to me. I want you to hear me. Uh, Jesus wants you to listen to this. That Al Sharpton, every project that has gone up, every high rise, every building, the Marriott Hotel, all the other residential buildings, Al Sharpton, has been given a kickback for every developed property in Harlem. You know, Al Sharpton, uh, why he has all of this power now, and the reason why he's on MSNBC is because the Jewish bankers, developers, have given him, here's a man that the whole world knows is an unrepentant drug dealer selling drugs snitched on the mafiosa. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Al Sharpton snitched on the Italian mafia boys from Staten Island who were dealing drugs here in Harlem. And Al's Jewish money and Al's protection Al's influence is so powerful that the mafia wouldn't touch him. The Jews who run the money systems in New York told the, uh, the mafioso boys 
out there in Staten Island after I snitched on them. If you touch him, we're going to cut off your access to cash. We're going to cut off your access to money laundering. We're going to cut off your access to banking. Let this little rat go, and we'll call it even. But that ain't all. Then Al demands that the Jewish owners of the MS and the NBC network give him a spot on, the, on their newscast program. Now, I took him down. He was on there five days a week. I took him down going back about five years ago. But he's back now on Saturday and Sunday. Listen to me. Listen to me. Al Sharpton is a billionaire. Al Sharpton gets a cut from every development. When, when, the, when the Jews saw that Al could create death, that he could bring people to march against them and their development after Fred is fine, they said, let's just cut a deal with him, buy him out. And Al gets a kickback. Right now, he gets a kickback. And not just that, but then the Jewish people, then because Al helped them land grab Harlem. Listen, what Al Sharpton has done in helping the Jewish developers land grab Harlem <laughs> will make what the pilgrims did in buying Manhattan with $24 and some bees <laughs> look like a birthday party. What Al done. But not just Al, David Dinkins, who's now dead, the late David Dinkins, did the same thing with Columbia University. Now, David Dinkins didn't have the kind of, you know, we'll burn down your store. We'll burn down your employee. We'll have people afraid to come to work for you. David Dinkins didn't have that kind of power. But he cohorted with, with Columbia University and uh, was able to talk all the mom and pop stores on West 125th Street and Broadway to sell their property to Columbia University. Now Columbia University owns all that property. They just pay $84 million for the old fairway supermarket plant right there on the Hudson River and 125th Street. Now, that was David Dinkins. So when this was going on about 15 years ago, David Dinkins was prostituting himself for Columbia University to get the people to sell their property. We had a meeting, Community Board 10 or Community Board 9, I forget which, which one it was now. David Dinkins, I was in that meeting. I spoke at that meeting. Luke, Lee Bollinger was in that meeting. David Dinkins got up and was trying to convince the people and the Community Board that this was a good idea to sell their property and let Columbia University build all that area there south of, um, of uh, Manhattanville houses, right on the coast of the Hudson River, the end of 125th Street. David Dinkins got up and said, oh, you know, I'm your first black mayor. They said, boo, the hell with you. You a seller. They booed him for a half an hour, and they wouldn't let him talk. They wouldn't let David Dinkins, because they saw that David Dinkins was doing this, what Al Sharpton is doing now, pocketing money to buy up Harlem. They got a cut. I got up in that meeting. I spoke in that meeting. They didn't boo me. They let me speak. But my friends here, you have to understand something. And I'm going to let you go. Al Sharpton had become so powerful with the Jewish money. And I don't say that because I hate Jews. I'm a Zionist. What do you mean by that? I believe that God gave the land of Israel to the Jews. In the Bible to Abraham, took it away from my brother Canaan and said it was the land flowing with milk and honey. And that's where I stand. I stand with the Jews. I, I stand with them. I preach, in, I preach in Jewish synagogues. I run with Jewish people. I'm not a Jew hater. I'm just telling you, Jews got money. They got influence. There's all these people running around here the other day marching and protesting and marching and trying to get Voting Rights Act and all of that. Can't all listen. All that ain't nothing. You ain't got no money, you ain't getting nothing. And everybody knows it. But the thing I want to leave you with is that Al Sharpton is getting paid. Al Sharpton is a billionaire. Al Sharpton gets a cut every time you see a development or a crane going up and a building being built. Every time you see a 
got new development uh, get, be, uh, be happening, our shop's getting the cut. And not only that, because they don't leadership, they're tearing down churches. And, and, and first, these Jewish uh, interlopers, that's what Al called them, if you don't mind. And first, all they were interested in just uh, apartment buildings or uh, brownstone. Now they've gone for the churches. They've gone for the historical sites, like the Lennox Lounge. They, 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 they'll they be going for the Apollo if it, didn't, if it wasn't a landmark. They have these Jewish developers are spared no mercy, no mercy whatsoever. While homelessness has increased in Harlem like you will not believe. We've never seen homelessness the way it is now.